I think that's probably um, uh, uh, an oversimplification. What what is true is that there is a great deal of worry that uh, some of the things that could be done would disadvantage the developing countries. And one example that was given, uh, I mentioned it, one of the speakers mentioned it, was that the provision of guarantees by the United States has an asymmetric effect on developing countries, because even if they did exactly the same thing, they guaranteed. A U.S. guarantee and a guarantee from a developing country has totally different weight, and therefore induces uh, movements of capital from the developing countries back to the advanced industrial countries. So one of the points that people were making, I think very forcefully, is that the lack of exclusion, uh, the lack of inclusion, can have very disadvantageous effects uh, on the developing countries because these second these these kinds of indirect effects not in, not that the U.S. intended it when they do these things but these are some of the effects that are that that uh, are felt very strongly by developing countries. Another example uh, again mentioned by several people is that the contrast between the countercyclical policies pursued by the United States and the pro-cyclical policies that are being pushed on some other countries increases the instability in the developing countries relative to the core countries. And that creates both an inequity but also greater global instability. It help, helps you know, have capital slash around from one part of the world to another um, as we're facing this, uh, you know, it's one of the, the fact that this has historically been the case is one of the reasons why now capital is fleeing the developing countries. So it's this kind of pattern that we've had in the past has contributed to the kind of global instability that we have. Now, in terms of concrete proposals, there are actually uh, a, a number, there were a number discussed there. I mean, obviously in a three hour, you don't, you don't uh, go through all the details, but for instance, um, there uh, were discussions of various kinds of, of financing facilities, uh, resi you know, using some of the money from uh, 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 reserve currents in current countries that have lar large amounts of reserve. But the problem would be it would be difficult for those countries to make those those reserves uh, available just to the U uh, IMF, given the flaws in the governing structure of the IMF. For the, uh, uh, the, the suggestions, uh, longer term suggestions about uh, um, the uh, uh, reform of the global reserve system, uh, dealing problems of re re rehabilitating the discussion that was put on the uh, ICE uh, a few years ago by the U.S. Uh, administration about uh, sovereign debt restructuring mechanisms. Um, and uh, you know, I, I would say I, I, I could go on, but I think there actually are a lot of ideas on the table. Uh, and and this kind of discussion is not where you go down into each of them. I mean, I have a whole, there's a whole list of regulatory reforms, uh, which are absolutely essential and which are going to be a heart of, of what needs to be done. Uh, uh, reforms, you know, regulatory reforms on incentives, uh, regulatory reforms, uh, um, that uh, go uh, uh, to uh, a whole set of uh, practices, uh, things like speed limits, but we couldn't go into all those here. I, I refer to my testimony that I gave in Congress where, where that's laid out uh, in, in, in uh, some detail.